his body is against me and then he puts his hands in between he grabs my teeth and he grabs my body parts I knew I knew this uncle for for many many years like since I was a kid I never really never never really liked him he's always drunk my family sort of favored him because um, he didn't grow up with parents he was always alone he was a divorcee and stuff so uh, naturally they always keep him around uh, yeah there was this one day I remember I was sitting on the sofa and he sat next to me like really close and he used his elbows to rub against my chest you know sometimes you're here to just make excuses for people like you, you make excuses like you know maybe it was an accident or maybe, maybe it was just playing you know there was this one day he found me on on, on snapchat he started texting me on, on on the chat thing he asked me for news and it was just weird I was, I was scared so i blocked him yeah that was like one of the first few uncomfortable encounters. When I was four, 14, my family and I, we moved to my grandmother's home to stay there for a year because uh, we rented our place out. And uh, he came he came by my grandmother's place very often. On the day of the incident, I was alone at home. I was getting ready to go out I was wearing a dress slightly above my knees. He said that he was coming over to my grandmother's place. So I, so I panicked, right? And then I, because I'm alone, so I, I called my mom. She kept telling me to just try to not let him in, you know? And, and I could tell that she, she wasn't, she was feeling uneasy. And after a while, my uncle turns up and I opened the door. I wasn't feeling okay. And I think he was definitely able to tell. And suddenly he comes to me, stand next. He stands next to me and he starts stroking my, my, my hair. It was weird. Like, it, it was weird. Yeah, nobody does that to me in a sense. I don't even have a physical like relationship in that sense. Like, like I don't have a touchy relationship with my dad. He starts asking me if I could take photos with him, selfies, you know. And I said, like, no, because, like, what are you going to do with my pictures? And then he flips the, the camera, so now he's using the back, the back camera to, and he moves back and he starts, like, filming me from, like, from, like, top to bottom, you know. And then he, he kept asking me why I was shy. And while, while talking to me, he was trying to, like, touch me. Mind you, when all these things were happening, the door and the gate was, was still open. I kept trying to, I kept trying to tell him that I'm getting ready to go out somewhere. So like, if you're done with whatever you're doing here, then I can leave, you know. But eventually, he slowly was leaving, and he stepped out. He's still filming. I just pushed the door very quickly. He pushes it back open. And at the point in time, I, I knew like I was fucked because I could tell that he was pissed from his face. And he he pushes the door against me, so the door's open, and I'm pushed against the wall. His body is against me, and then he puts his hands in between. He grabs my teeth. I, I I didn't know what to do, and I was scared. I was struggling. I was scared. And he's just like grabbing me and he's like rubbing me all over and like pressing me. Like, you know when somebody is so garam and I was, like I already started to cry because he's big. So he bends down and he presses his lips on mine. And after that, he leaves. That was the breaking point for me and I kind of decided that I, I wanted to say something about it. So it's the evening. Uh, my entire family comes home. I told my mother and my sister about what happened, but I did not include certain explicit details, like the rubbing of my teeth. I, I, I knew that she was affected. My mother 
decided to talk to my father. So after a while, he calls everybody out. And when I go out, my grandmother starts talking about it. My dad asks me to tell her what, what, what happened. So I tell her my version of events. And then she goes about saying, I will call him and I will ask him. And after a while, she, she comes out of the room, like ending the call. And then she, she comes out and she says, I called him, I asked him. He said, no, no such thing happened. But, but if this is what you're saying, then okay, la, I, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry that this happened in my house. I knew that my mother was still pissed. She told my dad in private, she does not want my uncle to come over to my grandmother's place anymore until we move out of there. I think that was her attempt at trying to do something for me as a mother. On the other hand, my dad, not a single word from my dad. And the worst part is, he has a good relationship with this, with the man that touched me until today. I think that's where my dad let me down. It didn't feel like he cared about me even a single bit. And it didn't feel like I could trust him to protect me. It's better like if we love each other from a distance. I feel like there's just a relationship with, with my dad or my parents in general. I do not like being touched. I do not like it when people are very close to me, like physically standing very close to me. I don't like it when somebody touches me, somebody tries to hug me. I don't like it. I'm in a relationship for the past two and a half years. I think one of one of the things that I've I've had to, to put across to my boyfriend was that I don't think it like I, like we'll have sex and I, i'm grateful that he understands this one thing i'm grateful that he understands i think even if i were about to have kids it was going to happen at a very late point of my life i was young i was scared and especially when nobody believed me but i think if i had confided in a friend would have encouraged me to make a police report or would have... What I lacked was someone to... to, to, to tide me through that, that period where I was trying to adjust mentally as to, as to what actually happened. It could be anyone who also cares about your mental health. I think that's important.